Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar on helping to prepare your student for the career fair at George Mason. Sorry for the technological difficulties we are having. I appreciate your patience and we will go ahead and get started now. My name is Caitlin Euler and I'm the Associate Director for Family Programs and Services here at Mason. So our, I'm happy you're all joining in for our webinar today. It's part of a monthly series of webinars which takes place both in the fall and in the spring semesters. And our webinar series is really designed to bring information to you all, our Mason families um, in your homes or at, at your office, because um, we know you can't always come to Mason or call or stop by with questions. So we're happy to uh, present a webinar today on career services. Just a few things to point out um, before I turn it over to our presenter. We will have a recording of our webinar available on our website, which is masonfamily.gmu.edu. Um, we'll have that available. We'll have the PowerPoint up um, within 24 hours, and we'll have a recording available um, within a week. So if you miss any information or have to tune out or want to go back and review anything, um, you'll be able to do so um, at your leisure. So during the webinar, um, I invite you to chat in your questions. On the left side of your screen, you'll notice a chat function. Um, we have a representative here from Career Services who will be answering any questions you have during the presentation. So don't worry about holding your questions until the end. Um, I'll be enabling that chat feature if you're having any trouble with that shortly. Um, and so for that, um, we will go ahead and turn it over to our presenter, who is Ann Mills. She's the Associate Director for Career Development within University Career Services here at Mason. I'm Ann. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, I really appreciate being here with you all this afternoon. Um, as Caitlin said, my name is Ann Mills. I am the Associate Director for Career Development at uh, George Mason University. We are very excited to have all of you on the webinar today, and we are here today to talk about Mason's Career Fair. Uh, Mason's Career Fair happens every uh, semester, uh, but in addition to the Career Fair, one of the things that I would like to emphasize with all of you is that Mason's Career Fair is only one way that employers try to connect with your student. So while we will spend much of the webinar talking about the fair and how your student can connect with employers through the fair, we'll also talk about other ways that your student can connect with employers at Mason. So as a parent, I'm sure all of you are concerned uh, about what your student can do to connect with employers on campus. And so one of the best ways we think that um, you might appreciate a webinar like this is by making sure that you get your questions answered. And so we were thinking in terms of that these might be the types of questions that you would have. Uh, what could your student expect uh, would happen at the career fair? Um, how can your student prepare for a career fair? And also, what are some of the other ways that your student can connect with employers at Mason? So we're going to go about spending our webinar today uh, answering these questions. So this is the branding that we are using for our career fair this fall. Uh, we are using um, this train image because the first day of our career fair on October 2nd is STEAM uh, uh, Day. So STEAM Day means that we are bringing employers in that are representing the industries of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And so we are actively recruiting employers from those five industries to come to campus and recruit students on the first day, which will be October 2nd. Business and non-technical employers will come on October 3rd. I don't know if you recall from when your students came to campus for orientation, um, but Dewberry Hall, which is our very large space in the Johnson Center, that is where employers will set up. Um, they will set up their displays and where students will, um, will meet with employers, uh, will connect with them, um, will, uh, will talk with them about their skill sets, their interests, uh, will also uh, connect with them around whether they're interested in jobs or internships. You can see here that the fair will be held on both October 2nd and 3rd from 11 to 4. Um, so 
hopefully, uh, you know, depending upon your student's class schedule, they will be able to come at some point during one or both of those days. Um, in order for your students to find out um, which employers are coming, and it's always a really good idea for them to know well in advance who's coming, um, they can go to the website hiremason.gmu.edu. And Hire Mason is our job and internship database. And in order to get into that database, they need to establish an account for themselves. It's very easy for them to do. If they go to that website, they can set up a profile for themselves using their G number and their GMU email address. We approve the account within 24 hours. And once they get into that account, not only can they see the employers who will be coming to the fair, but they will also be able to see other jobs and internships that employers who want to hire Mason students are posting. In addition to that, we also uh, post events uh, different employers who are having events here on campus or workshops and things that we are holding are also posted there as well. Okay, so this is the information on our fair October 2nd and 3rd uh, from 11 to 4 in Dewberry Hall. So what can your student expect? Well, I decided to give you some of the details because I think for students who have never been to a career fair before, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And so I think it's a really good idea to, for them to, to have an understanding of what they're going to be walking into at Dewberry Hall um, on that first day. Uh, we currently have 137 employers registered for the fair. Uh, we usually get somewhere between 170 and 180 employers attend over the course of those two days. And as you might imagine, even in a space as large as you very tall, it's a fairly overwhelming number of people to be confronted with. Um, so again, that is why it's a really good idea for your student to do a little bit of research and know who's coming ahead of time so they can scope out the number of employers they might want to connect with. Um, another thing to keep in mind is we do have have a variety of industries and fields represented during the course of those two days. I mentioned that the first day, October 2nd, um, that the steam industries will be represented. Um, there may be other industries as well. So again, it's a really good idea for your students to check out who is coming on October 2nd and who's coming on October 3rd. We usually get literally in the thousands uh, numbers of students who attend the fair. And so there can be crowds depending upon the time of day. So it is a good idea for your student to be prepared to potentially stand in line when they're meeting with a particular employer. Uh, so they need to be prepared for that. Uh, so again, devoting some time uh, for when they come to the fair. Employers do come uh, because they are prepared to post jobs and internships. Sometimes students who are looking for internships don't come to the fair because they think it's just for the student who is uh, looking for a full-time job, and that is just not the case. There are employers there who uh, will have internships available, so it is very important to, um, for students who are looking for both jobs and internships. Um, another thing for your student to know is that sometimes employers will take resumes at these fairs and sometimes they do not. Um, the student should not be concerned, though, if an employer says that they do not take resumes. For some employers, they do not take resumes because their employment process does not start until the student starts the employment process online. And so they may tell the student, go right. to the yeah. website and initiate your employment process that is through true. the website. Mm -hmm. And the student might think that, oh, they're just kind of blowing me off. Well, that really isn't the case. It really is true that for some employers, their process really begins um, once the student initiates the process on the website. So again, these particular pieces of information that I have mentioned here on this particular slide, I think, are very important for students to keep in mind um, as they think about going to the fair. Um, another thing that, um, unfortunately, we can't show you through this webinar, but that you could look at um, on our website, we do have very small three to five minute uh, videos that show uh, uh, scenarios or show actual footage 
of our fair in the past that you and your students can look at to see what our fair has looked like in the past. So I would encourage you and I would encourage your students to go to careers.gmu.edu and under the student tab there is um, a section called attend an event or attend um, a career event rather and if you go to that you will see some video footage um, of our fair and so that also might be um, something good for your students to do to get a better idea of what it would be like. Okay, so how can your students prepare for the career fair? Um, I put this together, the, what I like to call the three R's. Um, I, I say this because it makes it easy to remember. Um, research, remember, and remember your introduction. Um, I think sometimes students forget how to introduce themselves to employers, but this is really, really important. And also making sure that they get their resume reviewed. So let's start with a quote that we, this is an actual quote that we got from an employer um, who has um, attended our fairs in the past. Um, and I think this is really good feedback uh, for our students. Uh, a number of students had not completed any research before approaching our booth. This hurt them both in that it was a poor first impression, and later in the discussion, they were not readily able to tie their career goals with our company. Uh, so you can see there um, the fact that the student was not prepared, what kind of impact um, that had in terms of what the, the company uh, or what the recruiters um, thought about that particular student or student. Um, research is one of the key things that employers uh, point to, not just for students who are here at Mason, but students across the country. Um, they want students who have done their research who know a little bit about the company, know their mission, know their products and services, know uh, the positions for which they are recruiting. Um, and when you don't know that and you, for example, approach the booth and say, so what do you do, um, that creates a poor first impression. And so we want our students to uh, not create a poor first impression. We want them to put their best foot forward and we want to make sure that they're well prepared. Uh, one of the ways they can do that is by doing that research in advance. But we know that a lot of times students wait until the last minute. So one of the things just to let you know that we do to help the students is Career Services has uh, a career resource center there at the fair that for, to help students, kind of what we call a just-in-time uh, way to help students who do wait till the last minute. We have computers available. We have resource material available to help your student prepare in case they do wait until the last minute. So that is a, a resource that we do provide to students uh, who do um, maybe wait till the last minute or didn't realize that a particular company was coming and then all of a sudden realized that they would like to talk to one of them and so um, want to spend some time researching before they go in. So research, very important. And you can see here, um, this is an actual picture of our friends at MetroStar. MetroStar is one of our corporate partner companies. Uh, and so you can see uh, these are the top three things that we hear from employers that they expect students to know uh, when they approach their booth. So service services and products that the company provides, the positions that are available, and the mission statement. And again, all of this information is available on the Hire Mason website um, or through our Hire Mason um, uh, database, but it's also available uh, directly on the company website as well. So there's, uh, there okay. really is uh, resources available for your students to be prepared before they come to the fair. So how can your student find out who's coming to the career fair? I did mm -hmm. mention that they okay. can um, register in Hire Mason, and, and uh, uh, absolutely, we want them to do that. Um, okay. If you yourself, as the parent, want to see who's coming to the fair, one of the things that you can do is, this is a screenshot of our website. Okay. If you go to students and then mm -hmm. go to attend a career fair, uh, under the attend a career fair link, uh, you can see it says there's a list of participating employers. And if you click on that link, you will be able to okay. see who okay. the employers are right. that are coming to our fair and which day they are coming. 
So if that's something that would be of interest to you, um, that is definitely something that you can look at uh, in advance as well. So my second R was okay. remember your introduction. Right. And again, okay. we have All a right. lot of materials on this for your students. Um, if you go to our website, and again, this is uh, careers.gmu.edu, uh, under the student tab, we have a section called prepare for the career fair. And I don't know how well you can see this, but up in the right-hand side of this particular page, it says get ready for the fair. And under Get Ready for the Fair, it lists four different things that your student can do. And one of those four things is uh, crafting your pitch. And that's basically the same thing as remembering your introduction. So what we try to do is get the student to practice in advance their introduction so that they're not nervous when they go up and shake that employer's hand, that they know how to state their name, their major, uh, how and why they're interested in that particular company. They, want to be, they should be able to link their major or how they're interested in that particular industry um, to, the to the particular company's representative or recruiter that is there. So, um, so yes, so one of the things that um, you're going to want to talk about with your students potentially is being that person that they practice with. Um, one of the things that we do with students, for example, in workshops is get them to write their pitch down um, and also help them practice uh, their pitch. Uh, you know, the pitch is something that sometimes they feel a little bit awkward about practicing, but you probably know from your own experience that the more you practice something, the better you get. So even if you, as um, the parent or, um, you know, the primary person who knows and works with this student, uh, you know, if you could be that one who sort of volunteers to help your student um, get better at that pitch, whether you're practicing face-to-face -face or over the phone, um, the more your student does that, um, the better they're going to get. So, um, so certainly, um, you know, you could have a role to play as well in terms of helping your student get better at their introduction. And this little guide here that we have on the website can help you and can help your student prepare their pitch uh, better um, and can make a better int introduction because we know that while content is important, certainly all of those nonverbals um, that the student uh, presents with are important as well. So the handshake, the eye contact, uh, you know, not chewing gum, you know, those kinds of things uh, are all very important when they present themselves to employers. So uh, again, having them know their introduction, be able to say it confidently are all ways that you can also help and support your student as they are preparing to go to the fair. Okay, the resume. Resume is also very, very important because we know that resume is not going to get you the job or internship, but it is going to help you get that foot in the door, right? And so we in career services have a lot of resources to help your student get a resume. And actually, I mean, I hate to admit this, but I was in college maybe 25 years ago. And resumes 25 years ago, for those of you who um, are uh, my vintage, um, are very different than the way they are today. Um, and so if you are giving your student feedback on a resume, um, unless you are a recruiter, encourage your student to come into career services because we have great resources and we talk to recruiters all the time. And we know that recruiters take less than 10 seconds to look at a resume. And we know the key words that they are looking for, particularly depending upon the industry that that recruiter is in and the industry that your student wants to work in. So again, these resources that I'm about to show you on this slide are going to be very critical for your student before they go to the fair. So we have walk-in hours Monday through Thursday from 2 to 4 um, and Friday from 10 to 12. We have something called the moving on guide. 
Moving on is a resource that's in PDF format on our website, and it's also in hard copy uh, in our office. And in it are sample resumes um, that your student can look at and help them uh, put their resume together. I would strongly encourage your student to look at that because they are resumes um, that have been vetted by employers, and they are ones that they can get some good ideas for how to write accomplishment-based statements how to put their education sections together, and if they are technical students, how to showcase their technical skills. Um, we do offer a resume writing web shop. If you go to our uh, um, website, up in the right-hand corner on the home page, there is a uh, tab called Career Resources. If you select the Career Resources tab, you will see three web shops. One of them is on resume writing. It's only five minutes, but it's really good material for the five minutes that you can watch that web shop. So I would encourage your student to check that out as well. We have two resume clinics coming up. A uh, resume clinic on September 30th and another one on October 1st. Uh, and the ones with, the one particular one with employers is a great opportunity for your student to get feedback uh, from employers from 11 to 5. Uh, we have employers from a variety of different industries coming in. Uh, it's going to be coming um, on a, your student would come in and it would be uh, on a first come, first serve basis. So there's no appointment. They just come in and we generally see students, you know, every 15 to 20 minutes or so. So they don't tend to wait very long, but they get great feedback from employers who recruit actively here at Mason. Um, and another one, so for students who are here in the evening, um, the October 1st uh, resume clinic is a great opportunity for them to come in um, and get some feedback from staff. So great resources to get their resume reviewed. Please um, encourage them to come in and get that done. I mentioned the online resources that we have. And again, we recognize that students um, are not here uh, you know, at the times that we're here. You know, we're here in our offices from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, and we're here in the office until 7 on Tuesday night while school is in session. But we know that we have a lot of working students, and we have um, students who are here in the evenings when we're not here. And so that's one of the reasons why we have an online resource list here, um, but we, and we're also going to be growing this list of online resources. And these are things that can actively help your student, whether they are a traditional student or a non-traditional student. So I would strongly encourage you to use this list of resources. You can see here from the picture on your screen that we have web shops on writing resumes, um, we have one on um, preparing for an interview and also one for uh, researching employers. So these are all things that your student can do to help them prepare for a fair. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can see that there are videos on career spots. Um, the career spots videos that we have, there's a variety of ones there um, with a variety of different topics, and two of the topics that are there are, you know, talking to employers is one, and there's also one on dressing professionally. And certainly I think that's one that our students struggle with um, a fair amount is what should I wear to a fair. And so the web shops, they have one for men and they have one for women. And so I think that if you look at those web shops, those will be really helpful for your student in terms of how they should dress appropriately um, for the fair. So again, I would strongly encourage you uh, to, to have them review those web shops in anticipation um, for the fair. Um, and if you scroll down that list, um, in fact, you can see it on this um, particular screen, there's interview stream, and there's actually additional online resources. So you can see there's a, a, there's a fair number of things on this list of online resources that, while they don't have anything directly to do with um, the career fair that's coming on October 2nd and 3rd, they are online resources that will help your student uh, prepare for their job search, um, help them be successful when they meet with employers. Um, and again, I would strongly encourage you to uh, have your students check those out because they are free resources available to your student while they are here at George Mason. 
Okay, so the Career Fair Survival Kit. This is something that, again, we strongly encourage students because sometimes they don't think about preparing in advance uh, for the fair. And so we try to get them to think about, okay, so before you get ready for the fair, before October 2nd, grab a portfolio. And when I talk about portfolio, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, like an art portfolio. I'm just talking about one of those um, foldable binders where you can put your resumes. So you don't want to put them in a notebook where they're going to be falling out and your resumes are going to rip. It's going to be a nice, um, uh, you know, binder kind of thing where you can put your resumes in so they're not falling out, they're not tearing, um, something that looks professional. Uh, pens. So sometimes when, in, when you're talking to an employer, they're going to be talking to you and you're going to want to take some notes. So having a pen available, and sometimes those fit nicely into the portfolio. Uh, so having a pen available and not saying to the employer, hey, do you have a pen I can write with? You want to look um, prepared to the employer. Copies of your resume. I mentioned that some employers won't ask for your resume because they will want you to start the employment process on their website, but some employers will want copies of your resume. So please remember to have your student bring multiple copies of their resume when they come. Um, we say breath mints. Um, again, remember those, um, you know, the, it's not just the substance, but it's also those intangible things in terms of how they come across. So, you know, if your student, you know, is just coming from lunch and they've had that, that heavy garlicky pizza, you know, it's probably a good idea for them to have some Altoids with them, you know, just because they want to make that good first impression. Uh, their, that their shoes are polished. So, you know, again, just a reminder that if they've, you know, tr you know, walked through the mud or if they've, uh, you know, they haven't polished those shoes in a while, whether, you know, female or male, a good idea to, to clean them up a bit before uh, coming into the fair. And then also that that suit, both male and female, that it's been pressed and that it hasn't, like, sat in the bottom of their suitcase in their dorm room. Um, but that they've, you know, brought it out, ironed it, or taken it to the dry cleaner and had it pressed. All this stuff seems really obvious to you and me as adults, um, but to our students, maybe not so much. So, again, these are just um, some good reminders um, that you might want to um, share with your students. Again, these are things that may be obvious to us, but some good things for us to remind our students of for during and after the fair is to obtain your the recruiter that you speak with, their contact information. So say you have a really good conversation or your student has a really good conversation with a recruiter. Very, very important for them to get a business card from that recruiter so that they can follow up with an email after the fair is over. So many times I hear from students that they've had this really good conversation with their recruiter and can I give them the recruiter's name? Well, I can't actually. I'm not able to go back and do that because sometimes the recruiter's information is in the system but I'm not allowed to share that or sometimes the recruiter's information is not in the system so I don't have it anyway. So it's really, really important for your student to get the recruiter's business card before they leave uh, the fair. And then in addition to that, making sure that they follow up. So send the recruiter a thank you email. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, again, it, not many students do that, so it helps your student stand out from the crowd. Um, have your student continue to learn more about the company. For example, are there alums that work at the company? We have something called Mason Career Link. Mason Career Link is a list of alums who have volunteered to do what we call informational interviews with our students. Mason Career Link is available on Hire Mason. Hire Mason is the database I mentioned where employers post their jobs and internships. There is a networking tab on Mason Career Link. And so your students, once they get access to Mason Career Link, can select the networking tab and see if there are alums that work for that company that they could connect with after the fair. And again, try to continue to learn more uh, about the company to see if that company would be a good fit for them. 
So we know that uh, for some employers, the fair is not the best way for them to recruit. They may want to try to connect with students in other ways than through a fair. So what are some of the other ways? Well, sometimes they come to us. And this is a picture of uh, where our office is located, with it, which is in Student Union Building 1. So we would encourage you to have your student make an appointment with us. Um, and we certainly keep up with uh, our active employers in, in terms of what they're looking for. Um, your student can contact us um, at the phone number there on your screen um, and make an appointment with us. Our phone number and location is also available on our website at careers.gmu.edu. Um, and we do have a lot of different events on campus that employers do tend to come to. Um, and this is not an event, but again, I'll just emphasize Hire Mason. We have a lot of employers who do not come to our fair who post jobs and internships on our Hire Mason site. We have something else called Industry Weeks. Um, I mentioned that the first day of our fair is called STEAM, STEAM Day. We are having a STEAM week, and STEAM week is the week of September 16th. And during that particular week, we will have company representatives from those various industries come to campus and participate in various events to talk with students about the work that they do. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, if you go to our website, careers, .gmu.edu, you'll see the events on our home page, and you can see a little bit more about what we are doing on each of those days. Again, that's the week of September 16th. We will be holding STEAM Week. And the week of October 21st, we will be holding Government Week. And again, you can go to our calendar, and you can see additional information about what we will be doing during Government Week. Each semester, we hold two industry weeks, and your students are actively encouraged to come to those weeks to meet employers and meet alumni who are working in various industries that they may be interested in. We have resume clinics, which I mentioned. That's a great opportunity to connect with alumni and employers in industries in which the students are interested in. We have an on-campus interviewing that's very active and is, and is starting now. Um, again, Hire Mason is a great place for your students to go to to see who the employers are who are actively recruiting through our on-campus interviewing program. And we have informational interviews with alumni. I mentioned Mason Career Link, which is uh, housed in Hire Mason. And so for students, who are interested in talking with alumni who are working in areas that they may be interested in. Uh, Hire Mason is the place to go to connect with alumni through Mason Career Link. And we know that 70 to 80 percent of people find jobs through networking. And so we strongly encourage our students to talk to alumni through Mason Career Link to build connections, to build their networks, to get information about uh, different organizations, um, different uh, ideas for careers, uh, and to build their network um, in terms of the professional discipline that they want to move into. Um, this is additional information on Hire Mason in terms of the kinds of things that you can do with it. I did mention the information about full and part-time jobs. Um, you can save searches and have jobs and internships emailed to you so you don't have to check it all the time. Um, and your student can also save their resume to uh, a resume book so that employers can look at them as well. And finally, uh, what I'd like to also add is if you are in a company and you um, are interested in hiring students for internships or full-time positions, we would encourage you to participate in our career fair. Um, if you go to our website at careers.gmu.edu, 
uh, you will see an employer tab at the top of the page where you can get additional information about registering as an employer and about participating in our career fair. We also have signature events and information about posting your position in Hire Mason. Um, if you'd also like to uh, sign up for Mason Career Link, um, that's also available to you. You don't have to be a Mason alum to participate in Mason Career Link. You can be what we would call a friend of Mason. Um, so that's also another way that you can help support Mason students. Um, and we would appreciate um, our parents and um, those who have a student here on campus who actively want to support Mason students to help, um, in, in the, what the quote there is, help their big dreams become attainable reality. That is our mission statement. So if you would like us or would like to help us um, support our students and help support our mission, um, we, would, we would really appreciate it. Um, you see our email there, careers at gmu.edu, and our phone number. Um, so any additional uh, support that you can provide to us, um, we, would, we would love to have you. And finally, uh, getting to questions as we've been going along. Um, I'm going to pass it over to um, Caitlin, but certainly if you have any additional questions, please feel free to ask um, any of your questions. And I really appreciate being here with you all today. So thank you to Anne and Matt for um, answering your questions and providing you all with a lot of great information. Um, as I mentioned or chatted in earlier, if you uh, want a recording of this webinar, we will have one available on our website, which is masonfamily.gmu.edu, um, within 48 hours. So you can go back and refer to all of the great information Anne presented. Um, also, we will be disabling the audio and the video functions for the remainder of our time here, but we will stick around in the room if you have any questions. Feel free to chat. Um, Matt and Ann will still remain here for a few more minutes. So again, if you don't see us or hear us, that's okay. We're still here. Um, feel free to ask any last minute questions that you may have about the um, career fair. And finally, just to close, um, we want to thank you for joining us and sticking it out with us through our technical difficulties. We apologize for that. We hope you will consider joining us again for one of our future upcoming webinars. Our next one will be held on October 2nd, and it will be um, surrounding learning services, presenting on some resources that maybe can help improve your students' study skills right in time for midterms and finals coming at the end of the semester. So again, a recording of our webinar will be available on our website, which you see on the screen. Um, and for that, we will close it out for here. And again, Matt and Ann will be available to answer any questions you have via chat. So thanks for tuning in.